Hi, welcome to the 10-minute video summary of the message that was shared at Henrietta Christian Fellowship on the 2nd of June, 2024. My name is Don Bold. I'm the pastor at the church. I'd like to take about 10 minutes to share with you some highlights from this morning's message. Uh, we are in a year that we are referring to as the year of transformation. Okay, and we are looking at uh, just asking God to transform us in many ways. We spent time being transformed by the word. Now we're uh, spending some time on being transformed in our prayer lives. Okay, and so today we're looking at being prepared for spiritual warfare. A lot of talk about spiritual warfare, but let's take a look at what the scriptures have to say and see um, what we can learn from this. Because one of the things that struck me immediately was how important preparation of ourselves for these things is. Okay, so 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 10, verse 3 through 5. All right, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses or strongholds. Okay, we are destroying speculations or ideas, imaginations that, uh, uh, that, that we, we have. And every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God. And we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Okay, we can't win these spiritual battles with the soul powered weapons of the flesh. We need spiritual weaponry and we need to be prepared to use it. Okay, so we must not yield to anything that is raised up against the knowledge of God, insist that every thought be obedient to Christ. Okay, so submission to God, what does our heart entertain? And in our heart, whose friend are we? Okay, I and mean, if you come to my house and I offer you to sit down and have something to eat and drink, I'm entertaining you okay if a thought comes to you and you play with it uh, you're entertaining it and it's going to have more power in your life this is found in james chapter 4 verses 1 through 8 and it starts off with this whole discussion about quarrels among us and just about the, the fleshly motives that we have for so much of what we do and so much of what we ask for but in verse 4 he continues and says you adulteresses and are you unfaithful ones do you not know that friendship of the world is hostility towards god and this is very important to capture all right, because the world system, I'm not talking about liking trees and birds. I'm saying that the world system that's out there that promises all kinds of rewards for doing things that are contrary to God is, if I entertain it, it's, it's hostility towards God. All right, and down in verse uh, 7, he eventually gets down to saying this, look, submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Okay, so in submission to God, I'm already beginning to resist the devil is a very personal uh, enemy that is that is uh, working that world system to my disadvantage. Okay, and it tells me, draw near to God, he'll draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Okay, double-mindedness, double-souled. In other words, having this one uh, part of my soul that's after God and another part of my soul that's uh, trying to flee from him, um, you know, that I need to, to make a decision and decide uh, I am going to, to live for Jesus in, in all things, okay? So preparing to stand with God, making the big shift that I'm going to stand with God in all things. I'm not going to yield to the flesh. I'm not going to yield to the soulish nature. I am going to serve God. Romans 8, 5 through 9. For those who are according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who are according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For the mind set on the flesh is death. Okay, if you're if you're after the world, the system is passing away. The mindset uh, that is set on the spirit is life and peace. You you want life, you want peace. Pursue the Holy Spirit. Pursue, pursue the Spirit of God. Okay, in prayer and in your life, because the mindset on the flesh is hostile towards God. This idea of being hostile towards God, not wanting to cooperate with God, for it does not subject itself to the law, for it's not even able to do so. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you're not in the flesh. You're in the spirit, okay, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Okay, so the idea of resisting uh, in spiritual battles, okay, and, and what we need to have in our hearts here. Okay, First Peter 5, 6 through 11. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Listen to these things, okay? That he may exalt you at the proper time, casting all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Listen, be of sober spirit, be on the alert, okay? Because you have an adversary, you have an enemy who's working against you, okay? And your adversary, the devil, prowls like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. I like the way the King James says, seeking whom he may devour. May he devour you, okay? Uh, there are things that God gives to us that say, no, he will not be able to. But it says, but resist him, firm in the faith, knowing that your experience of suffering are being accomplished by a brethren who are in the world, okay? We're all in this world system and dealing with it. Okay, after you've suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself perfect, confirm, strengthen, and establish you, okay? So this idea of being sober and being on the alert, Barnes notes on the New Testament, steadfastly refusing to yield in the slightest degree. 
All right, and so the picture of the hungry lion with a scary appetite that desires to be satisfied by devouring you. All right, so don't want to be someone who he can devour. All right, you know, somebody who stands firm in the faith says, We stand firm in the faith and resist him, he'll flee, he won't devour us. Okay, so angels ministered to Jesus after he was tempted. You know what? This word says the God of grace will come to you and do the same. All right, so we overwhelmingly conquer through him. This assurance, okay, it's on over a little further in that chapter 8 of Romans that we were looking at in verses 35 through 37. But in verse 37, it just says simply this, but in all these things we are overcoming, we are overwhelmingly conquering through him who loved us, okay? we In all these things, we, are, we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us, okay? That's the result of, of standing firm in the faith and in, in the face of, of these spiritual conflicts, okay? So we did all that to come to this scripture, okay? This one, the most famous on this over in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18, the whole armor of God. Oh, by the way, compare that with Isaiah 59, 17 and understand that the armor that God is inviting you to wear here is armor that the word says he put on when he went to battle. All right, so Ephesians 6, 10 through 18, be, finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Okay, not, this, not your fleshly might. Put on the full armor of God so that you'll be able to stand firm against the schemes. Schemes, that's, that Greek word is methodia. He has methods that he keeps doing over and over again because they work, okay, but they don't need to work against you. But stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Okay, we can, you know, you can see the people in front of you often that are a, a part of what's coming against you, but... Remember, underlying all of that are the rulers against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. All right, take up the full armor of God so you be able to resist in the evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with truth. Okay, have the truth, man. Just, you know, get in that word, get that truth, get it confirmed in your heart by the Holy Spirit, okay? Having put on the breastplate of righteousness, that thing that's intended to, to protect us from what's coming at us, that we are standing in righteousness before God through the blood of Jesus Christ and then also through our, our desire to, to be pleasing to him. And having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, remember that all of this is about the progress of the gospel in this world to reach the lost, to save them from from destruction in addition to all taking up the shield of faith okay that there are times when things are thrown at you and knowing what the word says knowing the holy spirit is confirmed in your heart to be able to speak back against those the shield of faith which are able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation man you got to protect your heart and mind and the sword of the spirit okay which is the word of god jesus used the word of god when he was tempted we should be using the word of god when we are opposed with all prayer and petition pray at all times in the spirit okay and with this in view be on the alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints uh, good friend here albert barnes never met him he was he passed away long before i was born but anyways he wrote something called notes on the new testament and about this he said this while you yield to god in all things you are to yield to the devil in none you are to resist and oppose him in whatever way he may approach you whether by allurements whether flattering promises by the fascinations of the world by temptation or by threats yield to him in nothing and with just one parting admonition Spiritual warfare is not a place for the unprepared. It's a place for the prepared, for those that have set their hearts on God and are desirous of being able to stand firm in his name. And with that, I'm going to say God bless you. We'll see you next time on the 10-minute video summary.